top story at this hour, Cam Newton, first overall pick from several years ago, for the first time in almost a decade, will not be a Carolina Panther. What are your initial thoughts on this? Um, uh, To me, this is a clear statement of intent for the Carolina Panthers. I think it's a smart move on their part. You know, if Cam Newton's not going to play, then it's time to move on. Obviously, they tried to trade him. The one thing I would suggest that I kind of hate what a lot of GMs do is they let it be known that, like, months in advance that they don't want the guy. And so his trade value pretty much went to non-existent because of the whole thing. But, you know, at the end of the day, you were getting virtually the same value from Kyle Allen and Cam Newton last year based on Newton's health. And Cam Newton was $21 million, and they didn't view Kyle Allen as good enough. So if you're not viewing Kyle Allen as good enough to be the starter, then clearly Cam Newton's not good enough to be the guy anymore in your book. So it's a smart move to move on, and Cam is going to get another opportunity to play. It just depends on where he lands is the next question. Yeah, it is interesting. I mean, for one thing, it's interesting to see if he's going to get an opportunity to start because as of right now, it's looking like he might have to take a backup role. With, you know, A lot of the starting jobs are filled. Uh, we'll have to see. But I do find it interesting because I think it comes down to how healthy was he when he was playing last season? He played two games, and he was terrible. He was not good. But uh, at the same time, the dilemma is, is this just who Cam Newton is now? Did the injuries just finally take his toll? Or was he actually just playing injured? And does he still have a lot left in the tank? It's hard to say. You know, he's been in the league for nine years, which is a lot for a running back. It isn't a lot for a quarterback. He's always kind of been in the middle of both of those two things. So part of me does wonder uh, if he does have more in the tank. It is worth mentioning that he passed a physical by the Carolina Panthers. uh, It was coordinated by the Panthers. He passed it. His foot and shoulder are fine now. But again, it comes down to how much does he have in the tank? Uh, I do find there to be very interesting things that happened when we're talking about the just the way the Panthers decided to move on from Cam. I thought that it was it was very unceremonious, unceremonious the way that they sort of just said Cam Newton's not on our team now. You know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers gave Jameis Winston a a better send off than the Carolina gave Cam Newton, the guy who took them to a Super Bowl. I mean, I'm just going to read some of these stats right here. He was the number one overall pick. He has 29,000 passing yards, which is the most in franchise history. 182 passing touchdowns, the most in franchise history. He has 58 rushing touchdowns, which is the most in franchise history. He went to a Super Bowl, won an MVP, and has been for the Panthers for nine of their 25 total seasons, which is 35% of the time that they've been a team. It just seems crazy for really the Carolina Panther to kind of just go off like that. Yeah, I mean, the way I kind of see it is it might be a little tone deaf. You know, there was, this is not the owner, GM, or coach who drafted him originally back in, what was it, 2009? I think he was the number one overall pick. And uh, no, not that long. Okay. But anyway. Yeah, I mean, 11 maybe, uh, around there. He yeah. played for nine seasons, so. so. Yeah, so, uh, you know, there – it may be a little tone deaf on their part that it's all new faces who haven't been around Cam Newton. Cause obviously he's the greatest Panther probably of all time besides Steve Smith. And that's even up for debate of who's the greatest of all time. And it's just at this point, you know, you saw what he had to offer last year for the team. And it remains to be seen what's going to happen with his health. And if he's going to be able to, cause he took a lot of hits and that was his game. Always taking hits. He was the, he was the goal line back essentially along with playing quarterback. And it, taking those kind of hits, you know, I don't know if his shoulder is going to be recoverable at this point. I, I, I do like what a lot of what the Panthers have done offseason wise. Like, I think this receiving core is actually going to be really good with, uh, you know, Robbie Anderson's going to be their number three guy. Christian McCaffrey goes with uh, Anderson, DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel. Like, that's going to be a pretty good team. And, you know, unfortunately, it is a casualty. You would have liked to seen a little bit more, you know, done for him as you know his legendary status as a panther yeah i mean obviously the notable uh thing was just the instagram post i believe it's instagram might have been twitter i'm not really on social media much but uh where it probably one of the funniest like uh, unintentional comedy moments is just him responding angrily to the panther's social media team but him using the font of like all weird cam newton letters uh it's very amusing but I, I do find it, it, again, it's just one of those crazy things where now in the NFC South, the four quarterbacks are Tom Brady, 
Matt Ryan, Drew Brees, and Teddy Bridgewater. So they're itch- I think for a Panthers fan, I've been looking a lot on the Panthers Reddit. It seems like they are very uh, disappointed just in the in the way things are going. Not even necessarily to say it's the wrong decision, but it's just one of those. It just it's going to be a wake up call because Cam Newton, I do feel like, is underrated. As a Buccaneers fan, I kind of am legally required to dislike him, but at the same time. I always felt like he didn't get enough credit. I mean, Cam Newton in his prime was unstoppable. And there's nothing more frustrating than a great running quarterback where you just can never seem to tackle them. It seems so difficult to stop them. Every third down and three, they find a way to get four yards. And I do think that, you know, if this is, you know, if Cam Newton is done and he never really gets another shot again, I do think that he was, he definitely has left his mark in NFL history. Oh, yeah, no doubt. 2015 MVP. Uh, you know, he was fantastic that season. It's just a shame. I, I just don't know how much his body's going to hold up and how much do you want to invest a guy who you're not really sure how that's going to hold up over this time. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about Cam Newton going to the Patriots? I mean, that's a theory that's been brought up a little bit. You know, I, I keep hearing this and I, I wouldn't mind him coming in and like competing for the job at all. Obviously, mm-hmm. you know, I say all this stuff about his health. But if he's competing against Jared Stidham, I'm more than happy to have Cam Newton be the starting quarterback for at least a season or whatever. But we don't have the cap space. You know, he's not going to come in here. Right. We can rework some deals to, like, open up a little bit of cap space. But you really think Cam Newton's going to take a $2 million one-year prove-it deal? Like, there's just no way. That's not the going rate for a quarterback in my mind. He's not going to take a $2 million deal. Well, it depends on what his other options are. I mean, if if – his other option is to get a a four million dollar deal somewhere else, or if you know if it's a six million dollar deal, he might take a pay cut to play for a great team and have a chance to prove that he still got it. You know, sort of the the Teddy Bridgewater model of I'm going to be a backup for a great team and sort of prove that I can be great here instead of being a starter for a terrible team where it will be my last opportunity. Not exactly the same. Yeah, I don't really see it happening either. Part of me thinks that the Chargers make sense, but they're seemingly very confident in Taylor. So I don't really know where he's going to go, but it should be a very interesting thing to watch for the rest of this offseason. Oh, yeah, no doubt. It'll be interesting to see. I think he, uh, you know, there there are a lot of teams that I think he can compete for a starting job with cap space. I was going to get into this a little bit with uh, Jameis Winston also, but essentially mm-hmm. if he wants to compete for a job, Right now, I have over the cap up right here, so I'll have this. Uh, the Redskins have $33 million in cap space. The, uh, let's see, the the Dolphins have $25 million in cap space. The Chargers have $23 million in cap space. The Bills have $22 million in cap space. The Jaguars have $20 million in cap space. You know, you can go down the line of all these teams and say these are all teams that, you know, you may not say that he's going to be the shoe in starter. Even the Broncos have twenty one million in cap space. You know, you may like the guy that's there, but why wouldn't you bring in a guy and say, "Hey, compete." If you can't beat an unhealthy Cam Newton for a starting job, then you're not an NFL quarterback. If you're a Drew Locke, if you're a Josh Allen, you know, this is mm-hmm. the same thing I feel about Winston. If you don't, ha- if you can't beat this guy, who's mm-hmm. kind of the benchmark for you know Cam Newton unhealthy or Jameis, I would say is the benchmark for an average quarterback in the NFL if you can't beat that guy then you don't deserve to be a starting quarterback in the NFL so I think there's a lot of these teams that can come in and give them you know a 15 million dollar prove it deal and say hey you're going to compete for this job if you win it you win it if you don't you know we'll figure something else out or you'll back up I think there's some logic there I think where I would a bit disagree on is something like I think the Washington Redskins for example I don't think that Dwayne Haskins is better than Winston. He's I don't know how healthy Cam oh, Newton is. Yeah, right. I don't I don't think but, him or Josh Allen are. But I'm just mm-hmm. saying that if they wanted to, you know, if they still feel confident in those guys at least giving him a chance, he might as well mm-hmm. get someone in to compete with them. Even a Drew Locke at that point, you know. Yeah. But, no, I, I get the idea. If you're going to say you're going to, you know, quote unquote compete, but the reality is we're never going to make you a starter. But if you're going to bring in Jameis Winston and say whoever you know, plays better Haskins or Winston, you guys, you're the starter. Winston is going to end up being the starter and you might as well just get rid of Haskins now, because I think that the real move is to try to re- try to build him up, try to see if you can reach his full potential or just move on from him altogether. It's up to you. But I, I think that, you know, there's some things I think it makes sense for, but only if you're kind of doing the, 
unless you really, you know, like for Cam Newton, for example, if you're, you're a Redskins, unless Cam Newton reaches his MVP form, which, you know, I guess maybe there is some logic there. I just think that, you know, if Cam Newton is unhealthy, even if he's playing slightly better than Haskins, I think he would play Haskins or Josh Allen. 